This is your world So let's vow to make it a better place Let every heart that needs to know You love is here to stay Ooh, It's time we live a new life Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you We're saved by His grace So we embrace your love today We are changed Look at this verse three through nine in the NLT. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. And the church said, amen. amen. God, did you notice past tense? He has already given us everything that, he, that we need. Now, there's something about that that says, if he's already given me everything that I need, I'm gonna reach out with my faith and I'm just gonna go ahead and, 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 and receive it. I'm gonna take possession of what may not be visibly in view, but if I can find what his word says and release my faith to take hold of that, he's already given me whatever I need to live a godly life. And so I take hold of that by faith in Jesus' name, and I receive it. Faith takes hold of what Jesus has made available. Faith takes possession of what grace has made available. You should be saying to the devil, devil, don't let me find this in the Word. Once you find it in the Word, you're like, uh-oh, you're in trouble now because now I'm taking hold of this with my faith. He says, we have received all of this by coming to know him. Wow. Do you know him? Do, do, do you just know about him? Do you know him? Do you have an intimate, personal, daily relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ where you talk to him and he speaks back to you? Because if you don't know him, you're missing the whole point where Christianity is concerned. Christianity is about a relationship between you and your heavenly Father. Christianity is not about a bunch of rules and regulations and, 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 and you know, handle this and hold this. And do it. Christianity is about a personal relationship with God, and he then begins to lay out the protocols for you. That's what it's about. It's, it's awesome to be able to get up in the morning and the first thing on your mind is, good morning, God. It's awesome to get up and, and you're like, Father, I thank you for a good night's rest. I, I thank you that my head hit the pillow in peace and my, and my sleep was, was sweet, Lord. I, I thank you that I'm healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I thank you, Lord, that my day has been ordered, and, and I thank you that you're with me all day today. Oh, God, I need you today. I need, you, I need to hear from you today, God. Oh, God, show me how to walk in love today. Show me how not to, 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 to live in my past today. See, see God knows knows all and everything about you, and he wants in on your life, and he wants a personal relationship with you. It is not just coming to church that makes you a Christian. It is your one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with God, and when you have that one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with him, he infuses you on the inside, and you are strengthened for the day. You are strengthened for the battle. No fear, praise God. No, no condemning yourself. No beating yourself up. We spend a lot of time condemning ourselves and beating ourselves up, and there's a personal relationship that God wants to have with you. Are you... Are you willing to have that relationship with him? I tell you, I'm so free. Because of him, I'm free. I should always be concerned about, you know, who's in the room and, oh, what do they think about me? Oh, are they friends or foe? And, oh, man, there's greatest, greatest deliverance you can ever experience is being delivered from people. You know? Wow. I know him. I know him. I know about him, but it's not enough for me to just know about him. Knowing about him should eventually lead you to want to know him. And they that know their God, they shall do exploits. 
if you've, if you've never tried it, step away in a corner somewhere and just say, God, I want to know you. I, I'm tired of trying to do stuff by myself. And just be honest with him. He already knows. Ain't you trying to get religious and lie to him? God, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm scared. God, I'm, I'm full of pride. I'm selfish. You even go to him sometimes and say, God ain't no good. <laughs> Just be honest with him. God's not trying to beat you up. <laughs> God's not saying, amen, you sure ain't. <laughs> He's not doing that. He speaks to you. You're just driving home, just thinking about him. And out of nowhere, he just whispers this from your inside, from your spirit up. Something so simple. I love you. And you think the God of the whole universe loves me. A personal relationship. Aren't you tired of perfecting phoniness in your life? Aren't you tired of phoniness in the body of Christ? Aren't you tired of people playing church? Aren't you tired of the circus and the clowns and the owls? Aren't you tired of all of that? Well, get to know him. And as you get to know him, you won't have to make an appointment to come and see me and ask me, is it all right for you to have wine? Ask him. You know him. <laughs> you should look how some of these world changers are looking at me right now, like, well, is it? <laughs> ask the Lord. I challenge people. There's certain things I just don't answer anymore. You come ask me, where that scripture at? Where it said da 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 You got an iPhone. <laughs> you can ask Siri, and she'll tell you exactly where that scripture is and give you 10 more if you want it. You ain't got no excuse. I'm not going to tell you where no scripture is. Well, you the pastor. Yeah, but I, I'm not no dictionary. You, you go find your own scripture. That's spiritual maturity, right? Coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and his marvelous excellence. Because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape. And notice, he's given you, he's given you great and precious what? He's given you promises. Someone says, but he, he hadn't given me healing. He's given you the promise of healing. Oh, he hadn't given me a promotion. He's given you promotion. He's given you the promises of promotion. Oh, he hadn't given me my house. It's in the Bible, isn't it, Ann? He has given you the promises of that. Can I share that little testimony we had? Pastor Ken's wife, Ann Terry, called one time, and she was just wondering. She was like, you know, I don't... I don't see any scripture anywhere where it has anything about a house. How are we going to get a house? I don't see what, how am I, what am I going to stand on in the Bible for the house? I was like, really? And that was before I decided that I wasn't going to show people scripture no more. <laughs> Man, I showed her some. She went and found some more. And I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, not only did she, she get her house, God has called her to help other people get their house. She knows that through the power of the Holy Spirit, he, ha he may not have given you the house, but he gave you the promise. He may not have given you the healing, but he gave you the promise. He may not have given you the promotion, but he's given you the promise. He may not have given you the peace, but he's given you the promise. And he said, through these precious promises, this is spiritual maturity. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption and that's caused by human desires. Number five, verse five. And in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. 
How are you responding to God's promises? How should we respond to God's promises? In faith. We see His promise and we say, praise God, I, I received that right now, and I hold on to it with everything. When things happen to tap in out of first thing, first base, find out what the Word has to say about it. Find out what the Word has to say about it. I don't want to hear what anybody else has to say about it. Find out what the Word has to say about it. What does the Word have to say about this, 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 this sickness? What does the Word have to say about, you know, uh, lack? What does the Word have to say about all of the things that you encounter in life? What does the Word have to say about it? And you go and find out what the Word has to say about it, and then you, with every effort you have, respond in your faith to God's promises. Respond to it. What, what will you say about this thing that He has promised you? Lord, I believe. Lord, I receive it, praise God. Respond to that promise. He says, supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence, and moral excellence with knowledge, in verse 6, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. He says, the more you grow like this, He just gave you a way to, all the things you need to do to grow. How's your patience doing? How's your brotherly love doing? All of those things that are operating in your life will be evidence of spiritual growth. He says, the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 9. But those who fail to develop, mm, I don't want to be a Christian and fail to develop. I don't want to go around saying, I've been born again for 30 years, and I have not developed in 30 years. Oh, I've been a member of this church for 40 some odd years, and still on the bottle, still drinking milk. I don't want to do that. But a lot of that can be, you, you can see that with people, just how they care of themselves. Their attitude tells you how mature they are. Boasting, arrogant, prideful, those are symptoms of immaturity. And we tell a lot about ourselves and not really intending to say those things by the way we carry ourselves. And we got to grow up. Well, how come God couldn't do that? How come God couldn't give me that blessing? Because you, you haven't matured enough to handle that blessing. He wants to do some great things for you, but you're not mature enough for it. Because if He did it for you, you become prideful, you become boastful, and you become a bad example of Christian people and how they ought to do it. Well, why won't God make me a millionaire? Because you throw it in a barn and keep it to yourself when He wants to use you to be a blessing to everybody else. He says, blessed to be a blessing, but you're not mature enough to know that. And so when you get blessed, you hold on to it instead of, God, what do you want me to do with this? Why'd you put this in my hands? He's looking for maturity. And so, lots of pastors don't want to talk about this because, as you can tell, you're not doing cartwheels while I'm preaching this. <laughs> Why? Because I am saying you have to accept responsibility to spiritually mature. It's a responsibility to depend on God. What I'm saying is I depend on God, but I accept the responsibility to depend on God to help me where my maturity is concerned. A lot, of people not, a lot of people are not interested in maturing. They're interested in the, in the, in the you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Slam, bam, just do it quick. Just quick, 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 quick. I don't want to do nothing. Just, you know, oh, oh, Lord, bless me right now. Open your eyes up. Where is it? <laughs> That's not how that works. And then when you don't see it right away, you get mad at God. Amen. Well, you send a letter saying, uh, I, 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 this, is, this letter is to inform you that the Lord is leading me to another church. Stop lying. Stop lying. See, that's, that's what's going on in church right now, just lying. You remember that sermon Taffy preached on lying? Just stop lying. You're leaving because you got offended. You're leaving because you couldn't get your way. You're leaving because you mad at somebody or somebody didn't speak to you or somebody didn't call you back or somebody didn't do that. It's amazing. And, and let me warn you right now, there are no perfect churches. Every church in the state got an issue. Every church. Every church. Every member in the church got an issue. Every member. Every member. 
every pastor in the pulpit got an issue. Every pastor. Every pastor. That's why we all need Jesus, because we all have issues. But those who fail to develop, <sighs> I don't want to go to heaven and recognize that I failed to develop. I didn't want to grow. I didn't want to mature. I just, I just wanted everything to be easy, and I just wanted what I wanted. And, And I got into self-pity. Nobody likes me. Nobody calls me. Nobody texts me. Dude, you better, you better wake up and smell the coffee. Because you're getting older every day. My wife told me the other day, she said, you know, people better be careful. If you want somebody to take care of you, you better, better not be mean to your children. <laughs> Don't be mean to your children. Don't try to get them to see your way all the time. Just say it one time, be quiet. They grown. Uh, that's a word right there. <laughs> you get older and, and you, you know, you might need somebody to help you out a little bit. You need to be a little nicer. I know I have. She, she told me that. I'm like, ooh. Hey, baby, how y'all doing today? <laughs> Daddy cooking some, some chicken wings over here. If you want some, come on over here and get them. Yeah, some of you parents, y'all, you need to check yourself, man. You need to stop. They grown. Quit trying to keep, keep them like, and most of it's just plain old, you know, you feel lonely and sad and get out and do something. Go for a walk. Go get you some M&Ms. <laughs> we got to learn that God wants us to live life in abundance to the full till it overflows. He wants us to enjoy life, and he's given us the grace to do it. That's why we need to make a declaration of dependence on him. Because what matters to God is how we treat one another. I said what matters to God is how we treat one another. That's maturity. How are you treating one another? And that's what I'm learning. I learn how to speak to folks, say to unsay. You're not Christians, I well, did I say? What does that mean? The goodness of God will cause a person to change their mind. And a lot of times, They'll see goodness through your life. Pause and speak to people. Well, I don't know them. You don't have to know them. You're in the grocery store, just listen, hello, ma'am, how you doing? And they may not speak back to you. They happen to be a lot. Hi, how you doing? You talking to me. <laughs> She's had something to happen in her life. She got an issue going on. Amen. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. And you're stuck back in something that he's already taken care of. And you're not developing because you won't do like the Apostle Paul says. I'm pressing towards that mark. I'm pressing towards this place of maturity. I'm pre pressing towards this place of, of perfection. We've always thought that perfection meant you flawless. That ain't flawless. You're not going to see flawless until you see Jesus. So stop it. That's why, you know why it's so just nuts for you to think that you can sit and point a finger at somebody else's mistake? For you to sit there and point a finger and judge somebody else means that somehow in your mind you've settled that ain't nothing wrong with, ain't nothing going on with you. You have to, for, for you to, be so hard on somebody else, it's for you to say you ain't got no issues. And we know that's a lie. Maybe you don't have a sex issue. Maybe you don't have a drug issue. 
Maybe you don't have a, 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 a crime issue, but you got an issue somewhere. You're not patient with people. You want what you want right now? If not, you'll go off. You'll, you'll cuss every now and then. You, gotta, you, you said you buried the book of cuss, but you, you tore off a couple of pages and put it in your back pocket. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get you to see. I, I, stop. Stop this religious fable stuff. Let's pay attention to Jesus. Let's grow in Him. Let's not forget that He's already cleansed us from our old sins. Quit beating yourself up from your old sins and rejoice in what Jesus has already done for you. Mature. Develop. Amen? Okay. Uh, we're talking about maturing through pressure. And, and sometimes the hurt and the pain. Taff and I on the um, Daily Word, this, I think it was last week, we talked about faith under pressure and how the Bible says that's a gift. And I thought, huh? How can that be a gift? He said, you can use it for development. What type of pressure are you facing today? Or you faced last week, you, you face in your life. Turn it around and use it for development. Don't be afraid of trouble. We started with that. Just because trouble comes doesn't mean it has to overcome. When this service is over with today, regardless of what's happened, you hold your head up, you put your shoulders back, and you walk like an overcomer. Because what kind of overcomer would you be if you didn't have anything to overcome? <laughs> got to have something to overcome. It's, all, it's almost like, all right, well, devil, I got to overcome something, so I might as well overcome you. And Jesus has already done it. And I'm telling you, you can mature in Jesus and find that that maturity in Jesus will begin to spread in other areas of your life. But you got you to want to change. Change isn't change until you've changed. You got to want to change. And unfortunately, a lot of times, some Christian people don't want to change at all. They want to just dump everything on the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, you know, <laughs> he can only work with what he got. And so let's yield to him.